Conference Committee Report Number 143, Final Reading of House Bill 200, Conference Draft 1, relating to the state budget. Is there any discussion? Senator Ige. Mr. Mr. President, yeah, I rise to speak in support of this measure. Please proceed. First, let me say that I am uh, deeply appreciative of the members uh, of this legislature, numerous members of the many executive agencies and departments, and countless members of the public that have shared their thoughts and worked with this committee in a positive manner to craft this executive budget. I would also like to especially thank my vice chair and the members of the Ways and Means Committee for their hard work on this budget and the many proposals uh, that were considered. And finally, Mr. President, I would also like to thank you and your staff for your guidance and support um, through these arduous negotiations. Uh, and finally, I would like to acknowledge one last time the um, staff of the Senate Ways and Means Committee for their tireless efforts and diligence in implementing the many decisions and providing uh, input for the many um, decision points we had to make as in crafting this budget. This session follows two consecutive years where the legislature has had to close deficits of $2.1 billion and $1.2 billion respectively. This year, the challenge before us grew and grew and grew as time went on. Um, at the end, the budget shortfall currently is projected at $1.3 billion through the end of the upcoming fiscal biennium. The executive budget is the largest component of the state's financial plan, and our adjustments to it comprise the single largest share of the solution to the severe financial situation facing the state. Together, members, we are able to balance the budget and close this deficit without taxing pensions. In the aggregate, this budget does increase the general fund expenditures from those authorized in the current fiscal year. Some may not grasp the reasons for this, but let me explain. This is largely the result of restoration of furlough reductions, the loss of American Reinvestment and Recovery Act dollars, Medicaid costs, which have increased enormously, and debt service requirements from the debt restructuring conducted by the previous administration. These adjustments, largely non-discretionary in nature, resulted in the administration's initial request to this legislature to add $624.9 million for the fiscal year 12 and $810.6 million for fiscal year 2013. The new administration submitted a request to add an additional $133.8 million for fiscal year 12 and $160 million for fiscal year 2013. This request included funding to address immediate needs of state programs EUTF payments, the temporary assistance for needy family program, and Medicaid needs related to the compact of free association. Colleagues, the measure now before you is a responsible budget that finds common ground and compromise between the various drafts of the executive budget. A balanced approach was taken that incorporates various components of the drafts prepared by the House of Representatives and the Senate. First, this draft represents labor savings in the amount of $88.2 million per year as a lump, lump sum reduction to the Department of Budget and Finance. This adjustment presumes that the current la labor agreements for HSTA remain in place, thus ensuring that student instructional days are maintained. Second, all reductions made directly to state programs in drafts of the budget proposed by the House of Representatives and by the State Senate were evaluated and in most case, uh, cases tempered. Third, a large lump sum reduction in the amount of $50 million per year was placed in the Department of Budget and Finance to provide the governor with maximum flexibility to allocate the reductions amongst the executive branch of government. We have heard the governor's desire to reprioritize and retool state government and his counsel against excessive horizontal reductions. The governor will have the authority to allocate this reduction to state programs in concert with his efforts to reprioritize and redirect state government agencies. 
Finally, the governor's request for additional resources have been thoroughly reviewed. Many of these requests are funded in this final conference draft as they pertain to maintaining the safety net and restoring the ability of government to perform certain necessary functions. However, many dis difficult choices were made and m many funding requests could not be accommodated. General fund appropriations contained in this draft include the addition of about a quarter billion dollars per year for Medicaid services, 13.2 million for fiscal year 12 for COFA related Medicaid costs, 45.2 million for TANF programs and another 12.8 million for cash assistance payments over the fiscal biennium. And finally, 6.9 million per year to the University of Hawaii to maintain enhanced funding levels provided by ARA and also to ensure that they can meet the increasing student demands for higher education. Additionally, numerous other appropriations were made to restore or enhance vital state services, such as funding for the Department of Education's contracted nursing services, deputy sheriffs for the state's court complexes, equipment for the state's dole care officers, positions needed by the State Historic Preservation Division, the Department of Agriculture and the State's Information and Communication Services Division, as well as funding for programs such as uh, preschool open doors and homeless services. In total, the general fund adjustment made by this budget represent a reduction of $259.8 million for fiscal year 12 and $358.8 million for fiscal year 13 to the governor's requested budget a significant portion of the stated um, budget shortfall. As we all know, the final version of the budget represents, uh, is the result of the give and take of the conference process. I would be remiss if I, I did not state for the record that I was disappointed that we were not able to get the House to agree to a few strategic investments made by the Senate that would move our state forward. Specifically, these include funding for the Early Learning Council to focus on early learning, expansion and stabilization of the Healthy Start program, funding to continue the STEM initiatives that are thriving in nearly all of our public schools, funding to the University of Hawaii to begin the Mauna Kea management plan so that would assure that we can protect this important resource, uh, and finally, a funding to expand the Academy of Creative Media so that all of our students throughout our state can benefit from this new age and most important um, industry that we, we pursue. Mr. President, this budget represents decisions that will best move the state forward through these difficult times. Colleagues, through your hard work and cooperation, we have amended this legislation to provide an appropriate allocation to core services in light of the state's fiscal situation. I encourage all of you to support this measure. Thank you.